Hey, what's up, people? It's John from Promo Weapon and Print on Demand Design. And uh, today we're going to make a simulated process color separation in Adobe Photoshop. I know that's something a lot of you uh, don't know how to do yet, and it's not that hard, so we're going to check it out right now. Open the old Photoshop up here. Open file. Now, the file I'm using I already had on my desktop here instead of creating a whole new one. And we're going to resize the page to be the same size as our uh, positive or our film size. And I'm going to go to canvas size in this case. And I'm going to go to 13 inches by 19 inches. And the image in the center is already like 12 wide. So I'm not even going to mess with that size wise. And then we're going to go to image, duplicate image. Now we have two up here. I'm going to drag one down. I'm going to drag the other one down to uh, undock them. And then I'm going to kind of resize these windows to be about the same size. I'm going to hit control zero and uh, something like that. Okay. Now we've got a nice uh, two up side by side. Now over here in channels is where we're going to, is where the magic is going to happen. So first thing we're going to do is create a t-shirt color and we're going to go create new channel double click into it name it shirt color or something now under here we're going to click spot color and that's already black and we're going to go 100 percent solidity and that's our shirt color now we can build on top of that and stack all of our other colors on that so here we go let's select the red uh, let's turn that off or click back on rgb we're going to go to, and this is going to be the same process for every spot color that we create, um, give or take a tweak or two. So let's go to select color range. And you should maybe notepad that or something. Select color range because it's the same step over and over again. Um, for the highlight or for the base white, I'm going to just going to go ahead and click highlights down here under select highlights because we're going to go for our white. I'm going to choose my uh, fuzziness slider here and I'm going to put it all the way to 100% and that's going to look pretty good for our, our white, our base white. If this uh, little box here is not checked, go ahead and check invert. That'll show you like what it's actually going to look like on your film. Now you have that selected, okay? So now that you see the little marching ants, we need to, what we're going to do is take that selection and save it as a channel down here. And that's going to be... Uh, save selection as channel click that now we want to deselect everything before we move on and just control d will deselect double click your alpha channel the one you just created call it we'll call it either spot white or base white whatever you want to call it and again we're going to go under here color indicates spot color click the color square and we're going to pick a uh, white, of course, that's base white. Set your solidity here to 85. And basically your solidity when you're picking these colors is all about the view, like how it looks on the screen. You want to try to replicate um, how much ink or what it's going to look like, depending on how much ink you're laying down. So it's not like it's important, but it's not crucial. You know what I mean? Whether it's whether it's 100% or whether it's, um, you know, 50% or whatever. Oh, sorry, Coke. Coke break. Sorry, moving right along. Okay, so that's our spot white. And we need to next pick a, let's go with the red. So again, RGB colors. We're always going to click RGB before we select another color. All right, select color range again, select color range. This time we're just going to go down here and pick reds because we're going after that red. Click OK. And you have that selected. So we're going to go over here to uh, save that selection as a channel again. Deselect with control D. Double click alpha one. That's the red we just created. And there it is. And let's go to name it spot red or whatever you want to name it choose it to be a spot color click the red chip 
And you can just grab a color that you think matches over there, or you can just you can go ahead and use your color picker and grab a red. And that's kind of dark for me, so I'm going to go ahead and move that up just a little. 15%. Okay, so every color except for my base white is going to be 15%. Uh, um, what was it? Solidity, <laughs> sorry. A little bit of a brain fart there. So 15% solidity on everything but white base. And again, that's just for view purposes. Um, as far as I know, you know, I could be wrong, and somebody please correct me if you know. But let's let's move on. So, so far we've got um, the shirt color, the spot white, and the spot red. And I know you're looking at that spot red, and you're going, whoa, that's way off. And you'd be right. So what we do in that case is we're going to click the spot red. And this uh, image, adjustments, levels, control L also. I'm going to take this middle slider and play around with it here. Maybe pull that back a little, or there, and pull back on the output. Yes. Kind of like that. All right. Now, um, and remember, what you see on the screen is not always what you're going to see on the print floor. It's all going to depend on a couple of things like... Uh, you know the ink color you're putting in, if you're if you're hit flash hitting it, if you're uh, you know how much pressure you're putting down, uh, a number of factors. In any case, we're ready to move on to the blue. So RGB colors again. Um, over here to select color range, and instead of grabbing the blue, I might. I mean, instead of just going up here and select blues, you could do that. Or you can go to uh, sampled colors and grab over here in this bluey purple looking area. And I think I'm going to do that at about 71 fuzziness here and OK. Now that's selected. Now I'm going to go over here to save that selection as a channel. Deselect, Control D, double click Alpha 1. That's your new blue. Name it Spot blue or something else of your choosing uh, spot color color square and we're going to sample this darker purpley blue over here and I'm going to bump it up to make it a little brighter for the view and 15% solidity and we're going to turn back on our shirt color spot white and spot red to go with it and that's looking pretty sweet really um, yeah dig it so moving on to do, 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 do. Uh, gray, yeah, that's what we need. See the gray over here in the bones? And this uh, little flower looking design on his forehead. Let's grab some gray. So we want to go back up to RGB. Um, select color range again. See, it, like I said, the process is the same um, every time for every color. And all you got to do usually to tweak it is go to um, image adjustments levels and tweak the and pull it in or out or whatever it's not that hard people make it harder than it actually is so moving on we got our we're getting some gray so I'm gonna go with sampled colors here again I'm gonna come over here to the left and sample the gray on this bone on the end and just kind of pull that up enough to get some of that gray and it's okay if it throws some gray around the around the edge of the circle there it's okay got that selected let's uh create selection or excuse me save selection as channel deselect control d yep you already knew it you're saying it with me aren't you all right let's go click into alpha one and yeah that gray is going to make that pop a little more you'll see that's going to it's going to look pretty cool and i'm not going to tweak that at all I'm going to name it Spot Gray. Grew. <laughs> gray. All right. Spot Color. And we're going to pick this gray over here again with our eyedropper. 15% solidity. And let's turn on our colors again. Yeah, see, now we got some, some color in those bones and those eyes and stuff. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
And you know, I think I might pull the blue a little. I mean, pull a little more saturation or something into it. So click the spot blue if you want to do that. Adjustments, levels, and just a little bit more blue. And pull this down to make it a little more soft around the edge. Or up, excuse me. And you can play around with that. Um, usually just use the middle one and the output levels on the darker end down here to soften or harden the edge. All right. If you have any questions about that, please do leave a comment in the in, down below and or reach me on Facebook or something or my website, promoweapon.com. And I'll answer these questions for you that you that come up. All right. So I think unless we want to pull some black detail in there. Let's say we do, even though this is going on a black shirt, look how dark these details over, over here are on the left and how kind of gray they are over here on our skull. So I'm gonna take and use the same method and go get some black. So RGB, click that, select color range, sampled colors up here, and I'm gonna grab some black from his nose here because it's easy to sample. And I can Take that down a little, about 53 is my fuzziness level here. And save that selection as a channel, deselect, control D again, and double click into the alpha one and name it spot black or whatever you want. Spot color here, color indicates spot color and Click the color square and bring this down to black at 15% solidity. Because, remember, every color except for the base white gets 15% solidity. And the base white gets what? 85. Alright, so now let's turn that back on. And look how much better that detail looks in the skull's forehead and stuff. Now watch when you turn it off. It grays out. And then boom, that puts some contrast, some more definition into that bad boy. And this is good. This can go to the print floor, as is. Um, some people may want to put, it depends on the customer's choice. Sometimes they want a really, really solid white for like that lettering around the edge. And sometimes they just want it to be kind of a softer, fady feel. In which case, this would be perfect without a highlight white. You don't really need one for this. Just hit that once. And, you know, if you feel like you need to flash it and hit it again on that white and you're good to go you're golden all right so this is this is a oops this is ready to print really um so what you can do now is you're done i mean you did it if you followed along with this then you have successfully separated the file in photoshop with simulated process and sorry i gotta have a coke i'm talking too much okay so basically what I was going to say is if you're on a, uh, a RIP, like AccuRIP or something, then you can print this straight from Photoshop. If you do not, then you'll have to take this into Illustrator or something. But if you open this, P uh, watch, File, Save As. And when we pick PSD, then we have this option down here to save spot colors and layers. If we leave those checked and we open this up in Illustrator, then it will read those spot colors from the Photoshop file, which is awesome. And I think even Corel Draw can do it if you, you might have to save it as a PDF or something and then import it into Corel Draw, but I think it will also pick up on those, those spot colors. So that's totally awesome. That Corel Draw is finally trying to play ball a little bit with Adobe, given its popularity. All right, so awesome. We're done. Um, if you have any more questions, thank you. Um, drop a comment down below. Reach me on Facebook. I'll leave links to all this in the description on my website, promoweapon.com. Um, and I, I think that's it. Like the video. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have, uh, um, I just wanted to say I'm kind of new to making the videos for this kind of thing and in general. So if there's something I can do better, perform better, talk louder, slower, let me know. I'll be happy to accommodate. Um, and also, if you need like personal help with this kind of stuff, let me know. And I can like remote in to your computer and call you 
and we'll work out your bugs. It's not going to be free for that, but I, I won't charge you a bunch either. So awesome. Have a good night, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks.